So before I get to the part that's really going to freak you out about people who really should stop using magnesium, it's important to understand that for most people, they really do need a little more magnesium for a wide variety of reasons. Like they're making bad food choices. It seems like, you know, most of the high magnesium foods are like green leafy vegetables. And if, if somebody's not finding green leafy vegetables at the drive-thru or the vending machine, they're not getting them because that's just kind of where they're eating their food from. And so the food supply, it does not have the level of magnesium that our food had in it 50 years ago. Just because of our despicable farming methods and the way that a lot of these foods don't contain the nutrients that they used to because they're not getting those nutrients from the soil. So that can cause a lot of people to not be getting the magnesium that they need. And then on top of that, a lot of people, and I mean a lot, are not fully breaking down their food the way that they should. They don't really have the ability to pull all the nutrients out of the food that they're eating, so they're not getting all the magnesium that's in there. Even if they are eating foods that have magnesium, they might have digestive issues that are keeping them from accessing that magnesium. So for a wide variety of reasons, there's a lot of people who really do need more magnesium, but there's also some issues going on, and we're going to talk about some obvious things where people might need to reduce magnesium. But I'm also gonna talk about some things going on behind the curtains that can really create a world of trouble. You don't wanna miss this. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. And when we talk about people really needing to stop magnesium, in some of these cases where they're really getting too much, they might still want to take a very small amount, and I mean like maybe open up a capsule and dump most of it out and then just take a small portion of that. Because it's important to understand the difference between getting a little bit of magnesium, like the amount you might find in like a multivitamin, or by taking opening up a capsule and dumping out a portion of that, and the difference between getting like a pushing dose, which would be where you would take a capsule or two full of magnesium. A pushing dose could create some of these problems that we're talking about for some of these folks, where most people could benefit from getting a little bit more magnesium. But in some of these issues, we're not really talking about like an overdose of magnesium or the magnesium getting to the level where it's gonna to create toxicity because that can be hard to do because the kidneys have the ability to get rid of most of the magnesium if there's too much coming in. But one group of individuals who really wants to be cautious with their magnesium is if they're dealing with kidney issues. Because if the kidneys can't filter out excess magnesium, then that magnesium could accumulate and create some trouble. Now, one tricky thing that we're going to talk about in a few minutes is that one of the imbalances that can really restrict the ability for the kidneys to do their jobs is can be magnified by taking too much magnesium. That's going to freak you out just a little bit. Another thing that people want to watch out for is if they're dealing with loose stools, they really want to stop taking magnesium until they correct that issue because magnesium has the ability to magnify loose stools. And if you're having a loose stool, that means you're not really assimilating the nutrients in the food that you're eating because it's all racing through the system too fast. It's shooting out the back door and lifting you off the toilet like it's a rocket. So if you're dealing with loose stools, you might want to think about stopping the magnesium until you can correct that problem. And when we talk about issues like this, like digestive problems and loose stools, and we're going to cover some insomnia things and anxiety, we have links in the description below that dig in deep into all those topics. We're not going to dig into all those, but if you need to look into that a little bit further, we have videos that cover all of those things in depth. So the other thing that somebody's going to want to be careful with magnesium with is insomnia. And people are going to be like, what are you talking about? Magnesium is the best for insomnia because people can't shut up about why you got to take magnesium when you have insomnia. This is going to flip your lid just a little bit. We're going to talk in just a minute about how magnesium can really help some people with insomnia and it can make some people much worse. So if you're dealing with sleep problems, it's important to look at your body chemistry and understand the underlying cause of that insomnia before you just start taking what all the cool kids are taking as a remedy for that particular symptom. We really want to look at the person instead of looking at the symptom. That's very important. Now, one really popular reason to use more magnesium is if somebody's dealing with cramping. And for some folks, more magnesium really can improve their cramping because magnesium is really involved in helping calcium get to the right place. And a lot of that cramping happens because there's not enough calcium in that tissue level and it's not allowing those tissues to relax and it creates 
cramping. We'll put a video about more cramping stuff in the description below, but that can be very beneficial. And constipation can be a really big problem that can be helped by more magnesium. Now in a few minutes, you're gonna actually understand why that is, and same with anxiety. Anxiety, there's actually two issues with anxiety that magnesium can improve. So magnesium can be very beneficial for a lot of things, but what we need to understand is what's going on with our circadian rhythm. So let's dig into that a little bit. So it was Dr. Emmanuel Rivisi who helped us understand that at the cellular level, our body has a natural circadian rhythm. And during the day, our body should be in what's called a catabolic state. And this is where the body is very good at creating energy. And it's really good at like breaking down old tissue so that that can be rebuilt and, and renewed. And then at night, the body should move into what's called an anabolic state. And in the anabolic state, our body should be very good at resting and repairing and healing all those things that we may have broken down during the day. So you can see both states are appropriate. We really need both states in order for the body to function correctly. So the problem is, is that it takes a lot of resources to switch from this state to this state. And if someone doesn't have a lot of resources, maybe their vitality is a little bit low, they may not be able to switch from day to night each day. And even though both of these states are appropriate, if a person can get stuck in one state most of the time, it can create a lot of trouble and it can magnify a lot of health issues. Another problem is that some people, for a wide variety of reasons, can get stuck way too far in one state and they can live most of the time really far into either the anabolic state or the catabolic state. So what we see in issues like a catabolic state is we see a lot of insomnia when somebody's leaning too far on that catabolic side because at the cellular level, their body's awake. So their body's like, go, go, go. It's not gonna say it's time for sleep. We also see a lot of loose stools because in a catabolic state, the body tends to send more of its water to the bowels and less to the kidneys. So this takes us back to that kidney problem. So the problem with magnesium when we're looking at this circadian rhythm is that magnesium is one of the most pro-catabolic minerals that there is. So if somebody is already really stuck in this catabolic state and they start taking a bunch of magnesium because they heard that all the cool kids are taking it, then they're gonna magnify the problems that this catabolic imbalance is creating. So if somebody has loose stools because too much water is going to the bowels, then taking more magnesium is gonna greatly magnify that problem. They're not gonna get off the toilet until Thursday. Now understand that there are also other reasons that someone might be dealing with a loose stool. There's other reasons that somebody could have insomnia. We're not saying that if you have insomnia, you're dealing with a catabolic imbalance. It's just that these issues are seen frequently with this imbalance. It's very common that we see type two diabetics that are leaning way too far on that catabolic side because in this state, it appears that insulin is not as effective. And then to get the glucose processed, the body has to make more insulin and then all of a sudden the body's not listening to insulin anymore. It's also very common to see people that uh, get a lot of injuries or maybe they have a hard time healing because the body's not repairing, they're stuck in the breakdown state all the time. They're not moving into the rebuild state at night so that can create a lot of trouble. So you can see that if somebody's dealing with a lot of these issues and they're taking a lot of magnesium, they can really magnify those issues. And when we look at the issues that happen when somebody's stuck in this anabolic state, we see things like constipation, because not enough water going to the bowels. We see things like anxiety, and this can be a really big problem because anxiety can come from being too far in this anabolic state because the body likes to make energy through fermentation in this state, and that can create lactic acid as a byproduct, and high lactic acid is gonna create some anxiety. But anxiety can also come from mineral levels and resources being too low. So if someone's dealing with anxiety and they start taking magnesium, if that anxiety is caused from an anabolic imbalance, then that can really improve the situation. If the anxiety is caused by minerals being too low, then increasing minerals by taking some magnesium could help that. So we see anxiety improve for a variety of issues when people use a little more magnesium. Tachycardia, that's another issue that we see from someone being overly anabolic. And so somebody will take magnesium and see their tachycardia improve and they'll be like, oh, that's because magnesium is this calming mineral. And, and the reason that they believe that is because magnesium is important to help calcium get down to the tissues so those tissues can relax. 
So when the body can relax, it can allow the person to relax a little bit. And the reality is that that's really improving this anabolic imbalance and that's usually why it's correcting the tachycardia issues. Now here's where we can really throw a curveball is that we can see insomnia in this anabolic imbalance as well. And we're like, well, wait a minute, they're stuck in the sleep and repair state, but they can't sleep. And that's because this imbalance has the ability to make insulin actually a little bit too effective. Almost like it acts like a bully and sweeps out too much glucose from the bloodstream and then the person's blood sugar crashes and that wakes them up because the body's like, hey, we don't have any fuel, kind of going to do an emergency here, wake up and go get some Nilla wafers out of the cupboard. And if an overly anabolic situation is creating that problem for a person, then if they take magnesium before they go to bed, like so many people do, it will help them sleep. It will help correct that imbalance and stop setting off sugar so hard, and also if their minerals are low, then it's really gonna help them sleep. But if you're doing that, you 100% absolutely must go down to the description below the video and watch our video on stop using magnesium for sleep. And that will help you understand how, even though it's helping the situation, you're working against your body's natural circadian rhythm. And it'll show you how to do it the right way where you can get all the benefits, but also work with your body instead of against it. So just because a person has a symptom doesn't mean that they're dealing with that imbalance. You really got to look at the body chemistry and understand what's going on. And we'll put our link to our video on insomnia below so you can dig deeper if you're dealing with sleep issues. But you can see that even though magnesium can be helpful for a lot of things, you don't want to use it as a remedy for a symptom. You really want to look at your body chemistry and see is magnesium going to make things worse for me? or is increasing my magnesium gonna turn things around and make things a whole lot better? So to understand how to do this, jump over right now and watch our video on how to understand if your circadian rhythm is off. So you can see it's not just about sleep, your circadian rhythm being off can create a whole lot of other trouble. I can't wait to hear about your results.